This podcast is brought to you by the award-winning prop firm, Fidel Chris. Trading Nutty, episode 206. I build an EA that is uh, capable of doing an analysis from weekly to the one-minute perspective. Um, so if price is moving into a direction, it is able to, to scan the weekly and the daily zones. And within a daily zone, it's, it's capable to find a four-hour or one-hour zone. And even if you zoom into the one-hour zone, for example, uh, it is capable to detect a uh, one or five minute break of structures and uh, it is also capable to execute on the mitigation uh, even on the one minute time frame. But what, what I've seen a lot is that uh, a lot of SMC, classic SMC traders are not profitable as well as the EA is not profitable. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than... I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to the Christmas edition of the Trading Up podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Ruben on the show. Now, Ruben is one of my Robot Builder Club members who's gone on to do some amazing things. In fact, he's managed to beat out the uh, manual traders at the fund that he's now working at uh, with his Algo Trading Solutions. So, folks, you're going to hear all about that coming up in the show. Now, we do get into some technical terms here, so if you are a manual trader, don't worry, there's stuff in the show for you. So you've got to listen through the whole thing to get the gold because there's all sorts of gold in here. Um, other things we talk about, uh, yeah, as a technical terms, EAs, Stands for Expert Advisor, which is essentially a trading robot. Um, and there are some other things like Quant Analyzer as a tool to analyze data. Curve fitting optimization are techniques to uh, find uh, or look at your back test or historical tests and analyze that sort of stuff as well. So, folks, that's all coming up. And we do have a proof video from Ruben at the very end of the interview. So you're going to see his portfolio, um, how it's been tracking over the past. I think it's like almost eight months uh, and you're going to see how that's progressing and I believe I can't remember if it's his personal or the I think it's his personal portfolio but he's running a variation of that at the fund now um, other things talking about robots and Robot Builders Club, I'm going to run a special offer on the Robot Builders Club this Christmas New Year period so folks if you want to get your hands on that and into the community, we're having some great fun over there. We've got weekly live streams happening for the Robot Lab part of it. We've got the uh, Robot Builders Club where you're going to learn how to build anything uh, similar to what Ruben's going to talk about today uh, without doing any coding whatsoever. And it can be semi-automated, fully automated. It's up to you. Okay, so go and check that out. Links under the video or in the podcast description. Uh, after listening to this and hunt around for that special offer over the break. Now, uh, other things before we jump in, one last thing. So we've got Fidel Crest here, uh, the sponsor of the Trading Up podcast. They are also doing a Christmas special, two for one Christmas special. You're going to hear about that in the ad in a second. Um, but the other thing they did, which is quite interesting, is they offered up a one day, get funded in one day. So pass the challenge, pass the verification stage and get your funding in one day. And they've found their first trader, and it's literally only been a week. Uh, I've just found that out. So it's quite amazing. I'm going to see if I can get this guy on the show in the future in 2023. So fingers crossed we can make that happen. But yeah, this guy managed to do the whole thing in one day, and I think he even made a $30,000 withdrawal. So well worth going and checking out that. And their two-for-one Christmas offer. So yeah, you get two-for-one um challenges so you buy one challenge and you're going to get an extra one for free all right folks so that is coming up uh on the show now before we get into everything i do want to say thank you very much for being a subscriber follower liker whatever you are or a new listener to the trading up podcast really appreciate it thank you for being here in 2022 we will be having an episode in between the christmas break and new year's so don't worry about that but yeah really appreciate it guys thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel liking the videos and have a great christmas new year period with your family friends whoever you're going to spend it with thank you thank you very much all right guys let's hear from fidel crest and get on with the show 
Hey folks, great news. My sponsor, Fidel Crest, are running their mega Christmas offer again until December 25th, 2022. You get two trading challenge accounts for the price of one. Simply use promo code Xmas-2 for one at checkout. And to get started, simply click the link in the description. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Nut. We've got a bit of a special episode uh, ready for you today. We've got uh, one of my clients from the Robot Builders Club, who's actually gone on to do some great things. Uh, he's, he's here in the house. It's Ruben from the Netherlands. Welcome to the show, and I'm going to tell people what you've done in a second. So, yeah, welcome. Thanks, Gal. Um, so well, Ruben's been with uh, me at the Robot Builders Club for a couple of years now, and he's managed to not just create himself a portfolio of trading robots that – uh, are pretty profitable. Let's say just pretty. Pro- you know, we'll see see some stats and stuff later on. But they're, they're pretty doing pretty well. But he's actually got himself. Uh, well, they've done so well that he's got himself into a fund, uh, an actual hedge fund, where he is doing the automated trading for this fund and on behalf of this fund. So um, it, it is great to uh, to have you on to hear your story to find out how you managed to get to this point. Um, and what it took. So to start off with, do you want to let the listeners, watchers know a little bit about you, how you got into trading and your journey today? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, to start with my story, I believe it was four, four and a half years ago where I started manual trading. And it started really like with a small account, you know, 5,000 euros. Try, I had saved some money. And from there on, I was trying to to let it gain. And my I, within a, you know, within a, a few months, I saw that um, there were a lot of fluctuations into my balance, and it was all due to psychology and emotions. And overall, I believe I lost my account or blow up my account within six, seven weeks or so. And what I did, I started a new account, a new challenge for myself, and add some new money into the into the account. And after a few months, I blowed it again, and and again and again and again. It was for me really hard to learn it in uh, in the right way, as most people say. And it, it had all something to do with um, psychology and emotions. Um, I have several degrees in mechanical engineering, and from there on, um, I started with really basic. I've learned to um, code in a really simple way, like C++, and um, doing a lot of function block diagrams and projects uh, for pneumatic and hydraulic um, uh, drills. Uh, drills? Yeah. Uh, drills, like drills and... Um, Let's let's call it projects. Okay. And from there on, <laughs> yeah, from there on, I combined my uh, manual trading skills with um, uh, my uh, programming skills, if you may call it like that. And I was searching on YouTube how to build EAs, and there I found your course. And so I bought your course, and from there on, uh, everything's history. And in the beginning, I I think I was. Um, pretty active in your course or in your community and asking a lot of things on how to build things and how things are working. And from there on, I was doing more and more on myself. And I found a few good people. Um, Also from your Robot Builders Club, they are not in it anymore, but um, I met them at your site. And right now we are developing and testing several yeah, several systems, new systems, um, new software to manage several or de- or uh, a few EAs combined in terms of drawdown, risk, um, copy software to, to transfer trades from uh, terminal A to B and to C and so on. So so how did, so let's hear the story around how you actually you know, took the learnings from the course and then developed this uh, this trading robot. How you got to the point? I mean, you must have had failure, failures along the way and disappointments to the point where something clicked and and it finally came right. I mean, what was the? How did that journey look to you? Yeah, um, first I was trading a lot of uh, private money and um, I failed a lot, 
and that was all due to emotions and psychology. And so hang on, so you're trading are, you're trading a lot of private money, other people's money at that point? No, 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 just my own money. Ah, oh, right, my, okay, my, my, right. So you yeah. you were putting no. the robots on your own money, and then yeah, so was, manual. I was I was um, running, I was uh, managing my own money with manual trading strategies, okay. and um, I was not consistent because uh, there were a lot of uh, external factors that uh, impact my manual trading. So from there on, I start building EAs and was sharing a lot of um, EAs that I have built and um, uh, developed and tested. I was sharing a lot of things about that on social media. And the guys I'm working for right now uh, has also have their own course, like the new Capital of Big Strategy and Buy System. And um, from there on, I know Max. And Max is one of the founders of the fund I'm working for right now. Um, and he was seeing what I was doing. Uh, and then he was asking me, from, hey, Ruben, do you want to go, come over for a cup of coffee? So we did it twice, or maybe yeah, we did it twice. And the third time, and they offered me um, a job. And um, I accept the job and from, I believe I'm working two years, two, almost two, two and a half years working for them in a team with uh, a few other guys. We have quite a small team and we are developing and testing EAs and um, also EAs that we have found on the internet and projects and several strategies we are building, testing ideas and discussing um, um, strategies at the fund and from there on trying to create um, the holy grail portfolio as a lot of people know call it um, and i think we have quite a good portfolio built right now and it will definitely um, um it will definitely okay i don't know carry on to the future yeah, so so just everyone so ruben's english isn't it's not his first language and he's already told me that he's probably no, gonna, definitely not. gonna stumble not stumble now and again so when he stops talking like that i'll fill in the blanks here so uh, i mean i've seen this seen the stats and what we'll do is we'll probably get a screenshot up of your uh portfolio yeah. today and it, it looks pretty good not, not just right now we'll put it up on the show notes and and what have you uh so Let's go back into when you were like creating these early strategies before you got found. Where did you get to? Like, what were you doing at that point? And were you, had you got to the point where things were actually, you know, upward sloping? Uh, at, at the first, at the, uh, at the beginning, I was searching and looking at your site and at your community and discussing with a few other guys um, and sharing ideas. And it starts really easy with um, moving average crossovers and uh, different risk to rewards and some trading stops and some management. And from there on, uh, you are trying to implement some indicators and make systems more complex and complex. And what I've done as well is I've automated the whole uh, smart money concept. Um, I've built an EA that is uh, capable of doing an analysis from weekly to the one minute perspective. Um, so if price is moving into a direction, it is able to, to scan the weekly and the daily zones. And within a daily zone, it's, it's capable to find a four hour or one hour zone. And even if you zoom into the one hour zone, for example, uh, it is capable to detect a uh, one or five minute break of structures. And uh, it is also capable to execute on the mitigation, uh, even on the one minute time frame. But what, what I've seen a lot is that uh, a lot of SMC, classic SMC traders are not profitable as well as the EA is not profitable. And yes, it is true that I'm capable to trade one to tens, one to twenty. And one to twenties and sometimes one to thirties um, with an EA. But the main problem is that you will have a lot of other trades uh, that are doing minus one, minus one, minus one, and so on. Right. Um, so on the lower time frames, it is really hard because SMC is kind of subjective, and it is not the approach is not mechanical enough to 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 let it work. For example, on EURUSD because I've tested EURUSD a lot. 
And along the building process and along the testing process, you've got you are going to get new IDs. And those new IDs um, you are going to test and build. And what I've found out is that you see that a lot of breakout strategies are more um, uh, are easier to build. And it looks like that the average breakout strategy is performing better than a uh, mean reversion or uh, an SMSA project or uh, a whole indicator based mm -hmm. project. Um, so in my portfolio right now, and, and I have two different portfolios, I need to tell you something about that. Um, I have a portfolio for myself, private. Uh, I'm using uh, some private money, my own money um, on that portfolio. And uh, not all the systems or the EAs that are running in my own portfolio are suitable for the bigger money, uh, like for the hedge fund. Because when you're trying to execute, let's say, 50, 75, or at least more than 100 lots, um, you, have to, uh, you have to have some serious good conditions to execute in terms of slippage and spreads. And the average retail broker conditions are better than um, the institutional um, conditions. Um, and we had some problems or problems we had some... Um, we had some bad experience experiences uh, during a CPI event, and um, what we have seen is that there was uh, spread gone really wide because uh, a few seconds before, or uh, I believe it was a few seconds before CPI, all the banks were uh, deleting their orders, so there was not much liquidity in the order book. So spread gone is really wild, and from there on. Uh, uh, some conditions were triggered within our EAs, uh, and that was not the big issue. But the big issue was there was no liquidity to fill our orders and also to not fill our stop losses. So uh, we have experienced that um, that it is capable to lose a lot of money within a really short period of time, even if it's not um, the difficult, even if it's not um, a fault or something into into the EA. And did you come? Did you come up with a way to to build around that? Um, yes and no. Um, you can do several things in an EA, but you are also heavily um, exposed to market liquidity. And if you are in a trade or trying to execute a trade or um, want to fill your stop loss, for example, um, you are yeah you are heavily 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 exposed to liquidity. So if there is no liquidity, yeah, you you will not get filled for let's say one percent risk, but you will lose five or six percent risk. Mm. And, and that's something that's happened in my own private portfolio as well. Uh, I have I have run run um, one EA that was really sensitive to volume, like uh, volatility, volatility spikes. And I've seen it during another CPI event as well, especially with the CPI events uh, now in the days, because they um, they bring a lot. Um, yeah, uh, they bring a lot. How do you say visibility? I, I know with CPI at the moment, with inflation being quite high. Yeah, uh, all the inflation stuff yeah, has some major impacts on the market. Yeah, um, whereas it didn't used to be as prevalent, but now because inflation's yeah. on the rise, everyone's doing crazy things when the CPI announcements ha hit. Yeah. Indeed. So, yeah, um, we have several systems running on my my own, my private portfolio, and uh, several uh, systems running for the fund. Um, and so, and what, so, so can you talk us through, like, developing these systems in terms of, like, what were the, some of the key learnings you had around making things a bit more uh, robust and something that was gave you confidence to run it on a, on your own private fund or for for the fund? I believe testing a good way to how you develop an EA and, and the strategy behind it is really important in terms of how do you test your EA. Um, let's, let's, let's take an example. If you have a strategy on the one minute or on the five minute, it's really sensitive to data differences. Um, it's also depends a little on the strategy, but it's also really sensitive to spreads, commissions, 
and uh, liquidity. So what you need to do if you a lot of what you need to do if you trying or want to test uh, a sensitive strategy is that you will set up all your um, conditions in the right way. And if you are downloading data from Tick Manager or Tick Suit uh, Manager, you have several different um, Tick Man Tick data providers. It's really important to um, use the right right settings for the strategy because if you are, I can let, let's 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 tell it a little bit different. I can show you the most beautiful backtest um, you have ever seen, like a holy grail backtest. Mm. But it doesn't make any sense because the conditions where it's tested on are definitely not reliable to the live market circumstances, and um, that's also or. Um, if you are going to do some optimizations as well, please make sure you are um, not optimizing moving average, for example, uh, for every each point, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, choose 5, 10, 15, 20 EMAs, uh, the periods. And, and because what I've seen is that systems that are way too optimized or way too over, over are over optimized will not perform as good um, in live circumstances compared to back tests and it all has something to do with the testing method um, the settings uh, over optimization of if or not and uh, I must say all the systems we are using right now has um, none of them is optimized. So a system is working. It's these are these systems are quite simple, but simplicity is key in my opinion. So what you see is that the most of most of the systems we are running are really simple, are not optimized, are tested very well over a period of at least six, seven, eight, sometimes ten or fifteen years. Depends on the strategy, how much trades it's taken over an X period of time. Um, yeah, and what you see. In my private portfolio or in my own portfolio, is that there are uh, a few additions um, compared to the, the, the portfolio of the fund, and it has all something to do with spreads and during spread hour or liquidity fails and uh, kind of brokers uh, we are using. Um, yeah. And do you have like a sort of set uh, set of rules that you use to do your optimization? Or when you're running the back test, it's like here are the things that I've written down, like a list, a checklist of rules that you go through to to make sure that you've you know you don't over optimize or curve fit a strategy. No, because I never went too deep in optimizing uh, optimizations, and um, and I believe the strategy is working or it is not working, and we are not focusing too long on just one strategy. We will work a few. We will work a few days, maybe a few weeks, but that's really the max. Um, to and what what do you define as like as in form. as in it's wor a strategy is working or not working? What would be a working strategy versus a not working one for you? Uh, you you build a strategy for example 10, 15, let's say one hundred blocks, and um, one of the first tests, tests you are doing, you will choose a few different pairs like your USD, USC, GBI. Um, and then you know there are different market behaviors between the pairs. The characteristics of those pairs are different. So if your USD is going down, USD, GBI is going down, and GU, for example, is also going down on your chart, um, you can assume that the EA has not a great edge or the risk to reward is not good, but overall the EA is not performing on three different pairs with three whole direct, three whole uh, different um, characteristics. Um, and then we can tweak some small things to try to let it work, but overall if it's not working after the few tweaks, okay, we say next to the next strategy, working on to the next one. And we are not going to opt optimize um, and put that, that much time into a strategy because we believe that the most simple strategies um, will work. 
and that that is something that will make us um, different than other um, uh, funds, I guess. And and so, like when you say you don't even, you know, you, you'll sort of, I suppose, what's the word? Uh, set a strategy in stone and test it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You'll spend three days doing it. Would you try things out like, uh, you know, say you say you went for one to one risk to reward? Would you try out one to two, one to three? Yeah. Or would you go that far or, or not? Yeah, 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 we will definitely do uh, a few tests like that, but we are not going to use any optimizations like uh, calculate the most optimal, opti- uh, how do you say, optimized uh, risk to reward. Yeah, uh, we will do it. Well, we will do it manually because, um, in our opinion, it's better to do things uh, manually or just uh, optimize it with um, values that make sense, like five, ten, twenty, twenty-five, and not one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, there is a bit of what I say you could call optimization in there in terms of you are looking to see if there are strategies within the strategy. But, but they're yeah, not in a logic way. Yeah, in a logical way that's not uh curve fitting it. It's not like trying to find the perfect solution. You're just yeah. trying to put in different parameters which do make sense. Yeah. And so would you like, for example, um select certain times of the day or certain days of the week to try yeah. and see what if we do work better on those? Or is that too much yeah, of an optimization for you? Yeah, uh, we will use strategy quant analyzer to see uh, how a strategy performs and uh, which days, months, hours, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, what kind of impact a time filter will have on a uh, several strategy. Uh, it all depends on the strategy, but you have strategies that have uh, kind of session that are really sensitive to sessions or opening of sessions or closings to sessions. And uh, we will avoid some spread hours. So. What we are trying to do is to find out um, which period of the day have which impact on the performance of the EA or performance of yeah, the the portfolio overall. And so, say you uh, say you ran a back test uh, across ten years, what would be numbers that you would say like this test has hit all the numbers? What are your sort of benchmarks as not, as to as to stats that you would have seen recovery it. Time. Recovery yeah. time is one. It's, it's one really big um, issue for us. Sorry, and what was that? The uh, the I missed that. Sorry, something off time. time. Recovery, recovery time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because um, imagine if an EA has a ten percent drawdown a year, you do not want to uh, wait for at least a year to recover from the ten percent drawdown. In our opinion, that's not that's not a good solution. That's not a good EA, and that will not fit within our portfolio. What you will, what you're trying to make, what you want to see is uh, recovery times of a month, two months, maybe three months. Because if you are uh, going into drawdown, you want to be as quickly as possible uh, out of that drawdown. And, and what about other other things? Sorry, man. Go on. Carry on. Even if the curve is really uh, not smooth, not smooth enough because then you will not have to draw them. But even if you have a good curve and it is profitable year to year, uh, a lot of strategies are not allowed to to uh, come into our portfolio because simply the recovery time is too big. Right. And so, what about if there was a like a stagnating kind of strategy where you know one year it didn't make any money, it didn't really lose any, didn't go into a lot of drawdown, it was pretty much yeah, flat. Yeah. If we have uh, stagnation or diminishing returns on, uh, a sev- on a specific pair, what we are trying to do is find a second or a third pair, and that will, um, how do you call it in English? Um, Offset this, this, the flat mm-hmm. period? Yeah, that, that will help um, the diminishing period or the stagnation period uh, pass away and that you can still make some money in that period with adding a second or a third pair. Right. Okay. And so, so you're not, from what I'm hearing, you're not that concerned with things like um, uh, how many trades it's taking per year? Uh, that, or... Yeah, it, that all depends on the strategy. Uh, yeah. We have strategies that are working on the daily and we have strategies that are trading five minutes. 
And um, because that diversification uh, on the timeframes, you will also see an, a lot different amount of trades taken over an extra period of time. And yeah, of course, that has a huge impact on the portfolio. But that's 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 something you need in a good portfolio, in my opinion. It's really important to have several strategies, but also on different time frames with a, with a different amount of trades taken over a period of time. So, so how many trades would be too fewer trades for you to like feel confident in a in a strategy performing into the future? I'm not. I'm not specific. What uh, specific? Uh, focusing on just one strategy. I'm focusing on how will this strategy uh, fits into my uh, portfolio. Yeah. And that can be one trade a month. That can be one trade a day. Um, but overall, it needs to fit. So I'm not focusing too much on on just that one EA or one strategy. Yeah. But I'm. I suppose the question I'm asking is if. If you were getting one trade a month, would you want to see thirty months worth of trades before you and like go okay, it's, it's had thirty trades. I got to feel that this strategy is going to be performing yeah, like this in the future. That's, or that's, that's an issue because um, if you have, for example, one trade a month, uh, you want to see first of all for, before adding it to your portfolio, you want to see a live back test or a live running test as well. And the period of your testing period with one trade a month will be maybe a year or longer. Um, so these strategies are not commonly used. So we what, have, what, 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 okay, sorry. No, no, we have one strategy that is setting trades once in two, three weeks, but that's the max. Right. So what would be the most common, uh, time frame or time period that your strategies would trade from a frequency point of view so like once at, a week at the, moment, yeah, at the moment i have probably around five trades a day right with multiple strategies though with multiple strategies yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and i think that's that's really necessary um to not be um too much exposed to specific market behavior but what most people do is that they are focusing on just one strategy, one EA, and they are trying to get the 10% a month to pass their funding or all that kind of stuff. But what I am doing is I'm just focusing on an EA that is capable of doing 2% a month and trying to find five different strategies that are combined doing 10% a month. That, dis- that, that, that diversification is really, really important. But if you see that the market is changing during COVID or during high or low inflation numbers and all that kind of stuff, you will see that the market is really um, behave different. Mm. And with with that in mind, do do you have a a rolling strategy kind of strategy, overarching approach, should I say, uh, whereby if, you know, the market does change and a one strategy performs outside of what it's normal, uh, yeah, yeah. instead of normal for it, do you remove it and replace it with another strategy or anything like that? Yeah, I have, I have experienced a minus 6% uh, slippage trade on one of my EAs. Uh, and what I've done is uh, I've put the EA off because the market is too volatile at the moment. And that has all something to do with uh, uh, with specific events like a CBI or an NFP. If there are any miscalculations or misexpectations, um, then market will change in direction so quick uh, without enough liquidity, and that system will uh, perform worse. And I've noticed it once, and um, um, I do not notice it. Or do not want to experience uh, it twice. Um, so I've turned out, turned off the system, and I didn't replace it, but I recalculated the portfolio with StrategyQuant. And from there on, um, of course, the diversification will be a little bit lower, but it has not uh, such a big impact uh, on the performance because yeah, we have five or six, uh, several, or five or six. Um, other EAs as well. 
And and is your goal to sort of keep adding to this portfolio of EAs yeah, yeah, yeah. and just stack on top? Really, okay, yeah. yeah. It, oh, okay. And so, how do you work out the uh, the the amount that you're going to risk per strategy within the portfolio? Um, for my own money, private, I will do everything one percent risky trade. But um, yeah, the most ideal situation, in my opinion, is to to stack strategies and to stack EAs and reduce that risk and to smooth um, your to to make your balance curve or your equity curve more smooth to reduce your overall drawdown. And I think that's capable. Um, but yeah, it, it's really hard to find good working strategies. So, you, so you t- on that topic, you talked about breakouts as like a sort of way that you went f- move forward. Funnily enough, we had Mister Breakout uh, uh, Thomas Nesnadale on the show not too long ago. Uh, I d- have you listened to his stuff, and did you learn anything from him? No, to be honest, uh, I haven't watched it. No. Okay, cool. And so, um, what? Why did you stumble on breakouts, and and what? And are you p- purely looking at breakouts in your, in terms of your trading there? Um, what I've noticed, we have built a lot of, of, of different systems and just for my own experience is that it looks like the breakout systems are easier to build or easier to, uh, easier to build. It's not the, the right thing, but it's, it looks like it's easier to build a good working breakout strategy than, um, any other kind of strategy in terms of indicator based or, uh, um, yeah. And, and how do you come up with your ideas for trading, uh, to, for, for identifying breakouts and trading those kind of strategies? Please again? Uh, how do you come up with the ideas for your breakout strategies? It, it's just an experience. Um, when you are building and testing, you will get new ideas. And the, the really good thing about the fund is that we are discussing at the office uh, about our own experiences. And then we are, uh, yeah, then the great ideas will start. So in terms of like being a, ma- if you're a manual trader and listening to the show and you're thinking, well, I'm not, you know, uh, automated trading isn't for me. It sounds too technical. I mean, how do you draw the correlation or the sort of, uh, yeah, the correlation between manual trading and automated trading? What's the sort of, what's your view on, on each? I mean, you, you can do it in different steps. We have did it uh, as well. Um, we have manual traders. Um, working for the fund as well, but we also have uh, trying to build some uh, hybrid systems. That means in the morning we are doing our um, analysis manual on the charts, especially if you have a really subjective strategy. And what I've done, I've built a hybrid EA. Um, let's, for example, if you uh, want to trade uh, a specific area on the chart, but not want to watch the trade. Uh, or uh, the, the possibility of that trade the whole day. Um, you put just one line um, on the chart and the expert advisor, the EA, is capable of uh, detecting a break of that line. And uh, it depends on how you create your EA, of course. But after detecting that line, you can build in several conditions uh, for execution or not. And in that way, you can be a manual trader combined with uh, some um, automations and uh, you do not want to or you do not have to uh, sit behind your desk a whole day and you are still a manual trader. And if, if you look at the fund um, without obviously probably, you know, annoying your colleagues, the, does the automated trading, how does the automated trading compare to the the manual trading and or the semi-automated trading what one does, what one yeah. what one does the best or it overall the automated systems are performing uh, much more better than uh, all the manual trading strategies at the moment yeah right and and by how much um i think the automation the automated strategies are performing twice times better than the manual trading does and there you will what we experience is that the human the human uh, things of life, or to be how do you say, um, the human finger in life uh, have a significant impact on the manual trading compared to um, the EAs. Hmm. 
That's interesting. Yeah. It, all, it, it all depends on the strategy because we have strategies that are providing setups uh, 24 hours a day. And uh, yeah, you need to sleep as well. Mm. And uh, yeah, then you are missing trades or not managing trades in a correct way because simply yeah, you need to sleep. Yeah. And if you had to sort of break the trading down into like, or some of the strategies down from, I suppose, maybe, maybe a variation, uh, I mean, what would like, on one strategy, your risk to reward be and win rate. What would that look like on one of the strategies? Just pick a, a random one. Yeah, the actual win rate of um, one EA I've developed is around fifty-five percent, and it has a take profit or risk to reward of a little bit more than one to two. Right. Okay. And it has a, a life track record of uh, almost a year right now. Right. Awesome. And so, uh, and what would be like a different kind of one like that was completely different from that? Um, yeah, we how higher the risk to reward? Well, either like a lower or a really high win rate, and a and a lower or a really high risk to yeah, reward. What, what, what we will see is that we have one system that's trading a, a kind of higher risk to reward, and yeah, of course the the win rate is. Uh, around 20 to 40 percent i don't remember exactly um but i believe somewhere there in between okay and and what about correlation so you 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 know you've got you're trading mainly currencies by the looks of it yeah what about correlations around those and how do you deal with that um it all depends on the strategy um if you are trading the gpi pairs for example you have of course, a high uh, correlation uh, on the behavior of the uh, Japanese yen. Um, but if you are trading that on different time frames with different strategies, your correlation could be kind of zero. Uh, but yeah, it, I think there is not one simple answer to that question. It's not, um, how do you say, it's not that easy. And what about like news trading? Do you uh, or red news? Do you have to factor that in? Do you turn off the the EAs at, when red news events come or anything like that? At the moment, we are trading during news, but um, what we noticed is that um, liquidity get less and less, or at least volatility increase and the liquidity decrease. Um, so the last few months, we see a negative impact during news events on our performance. Um, so we are, mm, we are, um, we don't know if we are going to use any kind of news filters. So first of all, we need to, 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 to see how much impact it has on the further development of our portfolio, um, because, because it can work out, um, uh, in several directions. If you're already in a trade, it could be a really quick uh, take profit. And on the other hand, it can be a really quick stop loss as well. So in the longer term, um, I think the impact will average out, but it really depends again on what kind of strategy if you are trading. Imagine if you are trading a breakout strategy, um, a high volatility or some a, a few or a huge move and um, can um, allow the EA to execute because there is a breakout somewhere. And if you see um, that, that liquidity spike or that that overall uh, move um, gets back to where it's coming from, yeah, then you will have, for example, depends on the strategy, uh, a really quick stop loss. So yeah, again, um, there is no there is no quick answer to that question. And and do most of your strategies have, uh, or do you prefer to use like a fixed take profit stop loss, no trade management, or do you always yeah, build all, trade management? We, of course, we all have so all the EAs have stop loss. Um, um, in the Netherlands, there are some other funds that uh, have used margin systems as well, and uh, I know they have some really really bad experience with it in terms of performance. Um, we have everything managed um, uh, with just a fixed amount of risk. And all of our systems, except one, um, has a take profit. 
um, between the entry and the take profit, uh, there are several um, um, several trailing or several yeah several trailing techniques, uh, and depends on from trailing from fixed lots to um, uh, or, or fixed ever fixed uh, percentages uh, to fixed pips. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to dive into sort of some general questions here. So uh, are more sort of to do with you and yourself. Like, I mean, so what do you think made you different from the average person out there looking to get into trading and, you know, where you ended up? What What do you think made you different? I've learned it the hard way uh, and really, really hard way because I've lost uh, a lot of money, my own money. I've saved uh, years and years to, to, to build some nice, uh, um, savings and um, the combination between uh, the psychology, the experience to lose money and how to not um, manage your money uh, by manual training and all aspects of life, simply um, that you need to sleep um, and the experience with my mechanical uh, uh, degrees that I had some uh, experience um, uh, with building and testing uh, or building programming um, uh, how do you say uh, trading robots or just no, sorry, tra- uh, programming just software, 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 software computer software yeah indeed yeah. Um, like C++ programming yeah. where I built um, a lot of Arduino projects and uh, from there on those um those experiences from the automations, the manual part, uh, I know my weaknesses in terms of psychology and emotions um, combined um, give me and my real delegation because if I want something, I will not stop before uh, before the goal is reached. Um, I think, yeah, that's something. And that so what will- what what do you recommend like somebody who was like listening to this interview and thinking you know i want to be like ruben what what do you what what would you say in terms of like steps to get there what would you say look go ahead and do this step by step um and find some good people around you where you can uh they can help you and that you can discuss with and share ideas with um i think that's really important um it can be a really lonely journey, but if you find the right people to do it with, um, and you can gain a lot of knowledge, and um, from there on, you can gain a lot faster in your experiences and how to build several problems or EAs or strategies. Because sometimes I do ask other people as well, um, how to build something because uh, when it's something really complicated i need an mql programmer because simply because uh, fx3 is limited um, and i can code a little myself but definitely not um, not uh, not that good mm. it's interesting and and what what were the what are the limitations because I, i'm sort of i mean I've, i'm yet to find any major limitations at all what no, kind of things it, were you struggling with depends on the, on the strategy but um what I found out is um, if you want to detect break of structures from a whole area of uh, uh, let's say if you want to detect break of structures from weekly to the one minute perspective, it's it's much more easier to uh, let made an indicator, for example, um, and implement that indicator into your FX Dreamer. Of course, you can build a lot of structures into FX Dreamer yeah. and build giant pro- projects. Um, but it will not make sense. It will make sense, but not in the way uh, of efficient working and do it as quick as possible if you want to test something. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. then it's then it can be really helpful to to know a few good people or some friends uh, that are capable of making some MQL based indicators for you. Mm. Yeah. So basically, it's, it could do it. It's just that it's probably quicker to do it that way if you know somebody and you've got the contact and you don't want to. Yeah, but- yeah, Every three yeah. what, what I found out as well is if you are managing that for, for example, five different strategies and five different EAs on different pairs, you are not capable of managing the drawdown over all those EAs together. 
And what we have done right now is develop a kind of software that is capable of managing six EAs on one terminal in one time. Oh, okay, so how, do, how does that work? Can you explain how that works? Yeah, imagine a lot of people are trying to uh, test challenges or verifications like FDMO, uh, etc. And um, then you have 5% drawdown uh, limitations uh, for mm. a day. And imagine if you have five EAs and combined they are reaching 4% drawdown during the day. Yeah. And if you are not able to turn off auto trading, um, you are not capable or you are not, not in time to set everything off. Otherwise, your daily drawdown limit will be hit. And mm -hmm. we have made some um, we have made some so software. If you are going to Google it, Google says and all the MQL for us says that it's not possible to set out the trading off due um, due by uh, MQL, but it is. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I've actually built this literally just the other day in an FX Dreamer, and it took about oh, yeah, yeah it right. can be done because you you use sorry sorry for everyone that's getting too technical here, but you use the global variable. And you set the global variable, and you set the EA to terminate. Um, you're yeah. turning it back on. You would have to turn it back on manually. I think. Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually gone down that route, but you could do that. Yeah. So let's yeah. Uh, let's jump into. Oh, actually, on that point, I was going to say that it's actually a very good point around getting together with a group of people. And what, funnily enough, a lot of the people in the Robot Builders Club just recently wanted to get together uh, in smaller groups. So what I might do is actually try and implement that into the into the program. Um, now, what about from a uh, mindset point of view? Like, is there anything sort of that you feel that needs to be, um, <clears throat> I suppose, bought or somebody needs to have from a mindset point of view when they are getting into auto trading? Yeah, what I've noticed is that um, I was always believing that I can do better than my own EAs. Um, so if I see a specific market behavior or a specific uh, move in the market and my EA was anticipating on that move, uh, I was managing it by, by hand, doing it manual. And sometimes it, 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 it goes in a good way and sometimes it went wrong. And that was all, that has all something to do with my own psychology and emotions. Um, trying to manage my EA manual, so close positions, adjust stops, adjust day profits, all that kind of things. But please don't, because you have an edge, you have a strategy, and uh, do not touch the strategy. Now, we're going to jump into the quickfire round here. So first question is, how long do you think it took you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? It took me around four years, three and a half. What's your favorite entry setup with all your strategies? I really prefer the breakout strategies. And do you use strategies to exit or manage active trades? Um, not on its own. And do you have a re recommended trading book or resource? Um, yeah, we are using Oxford strategies and um, there are a lot of books or a lot of, at the moment I'm building a few ideas out of a book, but still testing and it looks like it's not performing as expected. Um, but Oxford strategies is a really good one. Okay, not heard that before. So is that on Amazon or is that a, a uh, It's an open source. Um, I can share it okay. with you later on. Okay. We'll put the link in the show notes. Um, and <clears throat> what about your preferred broker and trading platform? Uh, I do use IC Markets. Um, yeah, I believe the conditions and commissions and spreads are um, quite good. Yeah. And trading platform? Uh, definitely MT4. <laughs> Hey folks, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use Hanko Trade. It was a no-brainer because I was looking for a broker with good trading conditions and one that wouldn't restrict my leverage. Now, by joining Hanko Trade, I've also cut down my trading costs significantly with their super low commission of just $1 per 100k. You can learn more at hankotrade.com or just click the link I've put in the description. And uh, do you want to walk us through your worst ever trade? 
my worst ever trade. Um, I believe it was on the Nasdaq, uh, US tech. I was trading it manually. Um, um, I had two times a few, uh, of, uh, two times I had a few a fat finger. Um, so instead of trying to open five lots, it were 50 lots. Um, one time I managed it in the correct way and I've made a quite nice amount of money in the other um, and in the other end, um, I lose a lot of money. Uh, so fat fingers are definitely, uh, if, I, if I'm executing for my phone, um, are definitely, uh, yeah, n- not that, how do you say? I don't know how you, how you say Convenient. The word. <laughs> yeah. Not that convenient. Um, okay, brilliant. Look, uh, b- uh, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the traders to find out more? Get hold of you. Um, I have my own website. It's algoindustries.nl, but it's only in Dutch. And um, you can reach me out on uh, Telegram, uh, trade with uh, underscore Ruben. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or any ideas you want to share with me, uh, please feel free to ask me anything. Brilliant. Well, look, um, a big thank you to Ruben for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with the links he's just mentioned, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Ruben in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. In this portfolio, I'm running a few strategies um, that are built myself and a few from the funds we are working for. And uh, what you see is that uh, it has a really nice diversification. So please be aware that this is a system or a combined EA portfolio of at least at least six systems. And we've put it on in uh, uh, April 2022. Uh, I believe it was at the end of the month because it looks like we have uh, almost a break even month in here. But it was not because uh, we put it on in the latest week of April. From there on, uh, we have built a track record uh, that looks, in my opinion, really sustainable to all the different market behaviors we have seen uh, last year. And the average trade win is more than 50%, uh, with a peak peak drawdown of 20%. And the peak drawdown is coming along from a combination of a drawdown of EAs and uh, also a trade with some really huge slippage. So what we have seen is uh, during uh, a CPI event, um, we have seen a trade that was doing um, yeah minus 6% instead of uh, a calculated minus 1%. And as you see, we have turned the system off uh, two months ago just to avoid such uh, such slippage trades because we have noticed that the system is really sensitive to CPI events or high volatile uh, moments during market market opens. Yeah, it's not. I do not have. And what other pairs have you got in there? Is it all just currency pairs? Um, yes, oh, we are only trading uh, co- uh, currency pairs except gold, and I've traded manually uh, once or two trades US tech, uh, but that was a fat finger fold as well. Um, because I thought I was on another trading account and I was executing manual on the US tech uh, thing. Symbol. And so your risk to reward ratio there's 2.75. Is that pretty standard? Um, yeah, it's not pretty standard, but it's an average of the several systems. Um, so we have systems that are trading a one-to-one or a small negative risk to reward. And we also have uh, trades that have a possibility or uh, uh, yeah, a possibility to have uh, a one-to-five, for example. And... Yes, I see there the the duration of the trades. Uh, you've got like some, most of them are closing within. Is that fifty hours? I can't really see. Or is it fifty minutes? Just a bit bit further down the screen. <clears throat> hours. Okay, right. So most of them are closing within that sort of twenty five hour mark. Uh, yeah. Around they're open for a day, and the rest are. There's very few that just run and run and run. Um, do you ever use anything to like close trades off early? 
No, I do not trade. I do not close any trades before the weekend, for example, or on Friday. Um, it brings a lot of uh, more risk with it. But I still believe that on the average, um, that, that it will be average out because um, sometimes yeah, it will hit your stop loss a little bit bigger than expected. Uh, but sometimes it will hit your take profit uh, bigger, bigger as expected as well. So, yeah. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll put a link to this in the uh, in your show notes page. And uh, so people can go and go and check out how this thing is performing, ongoing. And obviously, if whatever reason you want a bit of privacy, you can turn you can change the change the link. But um, yeah, thank you very much for sharing this, Ruben. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So there you have it, folks. Episode done and dusted for Christmas. Please have a great Christmas holiday period with your friends and family. Uh, we'll see you on the other side of it here on Trading Nut. Do remember if you do want to check out the Robot Builders Club offer, if you're now really keen on building trading robots without doing any coding, semi automated, fully automated, uh, turning your trading ideas into bots, joining my weekly live streams I do as part of the Robot Lab there, then yeah, find that link underneath the video or in the podcast description or over there on tradingnut.com and you'll find there's a little special offer over this Christmas break. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see you on the other side. Now, also remember that you've got that two for one offer on Fidel, Chris. So if you're looking to get funded either over the Christmas period or afterwards with one of these funding funding accounts, then yeah, you've got that two for one Christmas special with Fidel Crest as well. Folks, have a great holiday period and we'll see you in the next episode.